Hello, and welcome to Why I Love Warhammer, the series where I go into an unscripted ramble about why I love something in this hobby. Today, something a little bit different. I'm going to be fan casting 40k Warhammer Universe Primarchs, gods, godlike beings, and necrons. When I started making this, I was fully intending on a film or TV series that would take everything incredibly seriously, be as grimdark as, uh, and serious as people often make this out to be. It swiftly became a Warhammer dry dark comedy in my own mind where some characters would be fully live action and others would be very heavy on the cgi so yeah i'm going to use that as my go-to and my basis for this fan casting list that this is a series of yeah this isn't going to be a, a series that's going to be the most serious out there so, without further ado, Lehman Russ, not Lehman Russ, um, Lionel Johnson. Uh, Le Lehman Russ was the first person I did a casting for, but I'm doing the Primarchs in the numbered order of the Legions. So, this is Lionel Johnson. Lionel Johnson is a character. He's quite stoic. He was around during the heresy. He's grown a lot since then in terms of personality. He's someone who can and will annihilate you in medieval combat. He's got the Arthurian knight aesthetic going on. What I wanted for this guy was someone who was big and kind of chunky as a person who felt like they could be delivering lines in a way that would suggest that a, almost like a simplistic thinking and I thought that if someone can deliver lines in that way it should be someone who I've seen do stuff like that before and so my pick for Lionel Johnson is John Cena I thought the face shaped shape worked as well uh, his role as peacemaker uh, in the DC uh, in the DC universe I think works very well. The stuff I've seen him in, uh, I just think he could deliver a Lionel Johnson portrayal very well. And it might not be the most serious character he's done, but I think that he can do serious when he needs to. And I think that's really important for Lionel Johnson. So yeah, I've picked Mr. John Cena. <coughs> Fulgrim! Uh, Fulgrim was actually the character that made me realise I wanted to do this video. Um, I'll preface this by saying that actually what I'd prefer is if they ever did a series for 40k or 30k or whatever, that no one who they cast would be someone I've seen in anything before. I always like it when they cast unknowns. Um, when they did that live action One Piece on Netflix... I was very happy to not know who anyone was. I'd never seen any of them in anything else, even though one of the guys was in Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. When I saw one character, however, I thought, this guy, this guy is Fulgrim. And that is the man who, in the live-action One Piece series, played the character Hal Mepo. And he, he, the actor's name is Aidan Scott. Um, this is him when he had long hair, and the way this character was portrayed was exactly how I've always imagined Fulgrim to be, although, you know, albeit slightly more comedic. So, yeah, and, and I just very much took this guy as my Fulgrim, so I would, yeah, I, I want Aidan Scott to be cast as Fulgrim in a live, in a series of, of Warhammer. Okay, Percherabo. Percherabo is a character who you know, is the Primarch of the Iron Warriors, Siege Warfare Master, wields a hammer. But when I was thinking about who I'd want to play whom in a series, the only thing I could focus on 
was that this man has a very round head. And if you are familiar with certain types of British comedy, you may know who this is from the face alone. If you don't, well, if you if you don't, you're probably more understanding about why I picked this guy. If you do know who this is, you're probably thinking this is an absolute insanity. Because I'm picking Carl Pilkington. Um, if you've watched An Idiot Abroad, you're probably thinking um, that the guy from An Idiot Abroad isn't someone who should be playing a Primark. But I view him as a person and the characters he's played on shows like Derek as someone who is very no nonsense. It things that are superfluous and not uh, superfluous and pointless are just not things he's concerned with. And I thought that type of characterization would work well for Percherabo. And you know, because of that, I felt like would do well with a Carp Hilkington portrayal. And you know, I'd always be keen to see this guy do more uh you know do, do a wider range of characters. So and Percherabo as a character I feel like doesn't have as much popular uh characterization as other Primarchs. So I think we could really make him memorable by you know, to, to all, all all players and all moviegoers by casting Carl Pilkington. Um and that's not just me saying that as a Night Lords player. Um it's just a thing I've noticed. So yeah, Carl Pilkington is my casting choice for Percherabo. Jagatai Khan. Um so for Jagatai Khan, what I was really looking for was an East Asian action star. And my my first choice was the leader of the Huns from Mulan, but that's a cartoon, so didn't really work. Um, also, that film is very old. I don't think the guy is going to be uh, doing much acting anymore. The I also thought about some of the some of the more recent um, you know, Asian stars. Um, the guy who was. Um, the guy who was uh, in the MCU, Shang Chi. The I thought he he, he was good. Um, the guy who starred in everything, everywhere, all at once. He's a really good actor. They're very, they're young, and I thought Primarchs tend to be older, and where there were more than one option, I tended to go for an older actor for these roles. So I went for Jackie Chan. Uh, the other thing with Jackie Chan is, as well as being a star, uh, uh, as well as being you know, a, a, an aficionado of action movies, he does comedy very well. And I think that that would work well for Jackass I Khan. Lehman Russ, um, the first, this was the first name I wrote out when I was making notes for this episode. And for Lehman Russ, I wanted someone who was strong, felt like they'd be equally at home using swords and axes, someone who could play someone who was savvy and smart, but also dense. Uh, someone with that type of range, someone who, yeah, just really embodied... Lehman Russ and I was thinking about this along with the hair and the answer I came out with was Chris Hemsworth uh, this is a, an old picture of him because I wanted to find one of him being clean shaven rather than him being Thor because it's not actually his portrayal as Thor that made me think Lehman Russ would be a good uh, car made, made me think he'd be a good casting choice it was actually his role in Cabin in the Woods in that film, he starts out as quite a savvy, sophisticated, intelligent young man. And by about the one third mark, for reasons that you understand if you watch the movie, he's kind of reverted into a jock stereotype. And I think if you could have some kind of hybrid of, the, uh, of those two types of personalities, you'd have a really good characterization of Lehman Russ. 
and yeah, I, I I also would like to see the dynamic between him and the person I have suggested pl playing um playing Magnus the Red. Rogaldorn. It's incredibly hard for me to divorce Rogaldorn, the character in the Horus Heresy, from Rogaldorn as he appears in If the Emperor Had a Text to Speech Device. Um, but boiling it down to the non TTS type uh, characterization, he's quite stoic, builds defenses, he's a bit of a stickler, bit of a stick in the mud kind of character, but not obtuse about it and um, between that and kind of the shape of his face and stuff like that i thought that the realistically i thought the best choice for him nick offerman um i think he delivers his lines in a very yeah you know, in, in that kind of very stoic way i think that he portrays characters who are that right level of both obtuse but not um but but not like in a detrimental way only as far as it needs to go uh between his characterization in uh parks and recreation in his cameo in brooklyn 99 and his episodes in the hbo walking dead series i do genuinely feel like nick hoffman has the chops to give rogal dawn the justice he deserves Comrade Kurz. Comrade Kurz is my favorite Primarch. I'm a Night Lords fan. I have been for over a de you know, I, I have been a, Prim a, a, a Night Lords fan for like 18 odd years. Um, and so I really wanted to give him a character. Uh, I really wanted to cast him as someone who I thought could do crazy, do a bit sadistic, but also deeply sympathetic someone who is insane in a way that we feel bad for and because comrade curse he is that he is absolutely crazy he's got voices in his head he's the edgiest version of batman available he's yeah he's he flays people he's absolutely mental but he's driven to it he has this power of foresight that he can't really handle he it's driven him insane and the type of insane i view him being would be like a like batman universe and weirdly enough the person i've selected as my choice for comrade kurz used to be my preferred choices for someone to play the riddler and I want to be very specific with the specific version of this actor I would want to cast as Comrade Kurz because I'm picking David Tennant. And I specifically want David Tennant in 2023. Not David Tennant when... I don't want David Tennant to look like he did when he played Barty Crouch Jr. I don't want David Tennant to look like he did in 2006, 7 and 8 when he was playing the Doctor as the 10th Doctor. I want him looking like he does now because I feel like just through natural aging he's looked he's starting to look a bit more gaunt and I think that works well for Comrade Kurz and if CG and makeup could play it up a bit even better and because yeah I think David Tennant can do it as the doctor he was able to do a tortured soul in uh, is Barty Crouch Jr. He was very crazy, um, and he can do stoic. And if you watched him in that Netflix series Criminal, he can do people who are genuinely terrible down to their soul. And Comrade Kurz, as much as I love the guy, as much as Night Lords are my faction, Comrade Kurz ain't the nicest guy. And David Tennant can really play villains like that very well. Uh, Kilgrave, for example in the jessica jones series brilliantly menacing and if you could bring that aura to comrade kurz i am down for it sanguinius sanguinius was a tough one because i wanted someone who at least because sanguinius is perfect he's this perfect son of the emperor 
an amazing fighter, the best diplomat, everyone loves Sanguinius. Corn wanted Sanguinius to be his champion before uh, ended up with Angron. He's got literal angel wings. He's Jesus. He literally died for the Imperium. You need someone perfect, but no one's perfect. So I thought, okay, let's go with someone who can be viewed as a heartthrob but is someone who can do serious, someone who you can believe could lead and has an air of authority about them. And so I went for an actor who you've probably heard of, Brad Pitt. I didn't want, but I don't want Sanguinius played by a Fight Club era Brad Pitt. Uh, all of these casting choices, I want them. I'm picking them based on how they are at time of recording. So I don't want Brad Pitt from Fight Club. I don't want Brad Pitt uh, as he cameoed in Friends that one time. I I liked this version of him in The Big Short, playing the character Ben Rickett, because he was smart. He knew what he was doing but he was also very empathetic. He's got a really good line about, do you know what happens if the housing market collapses in the movie? Um, where he's kind of telling these two kind of young upstarts about the horrors that are going to be inflicted on society if they're right about what they're doing. And that sense of authority I think is important for a character like Sanguinius, so I pick Brad Pitt to play Sanguinius. Ferris Manus. Ferris Manus is a character who needs to be believably wielding a hammer. Kind of, I wanted someone kind of who can do very blunt to the point and <clears throat> yeah, someone who can who conveys that sense of power. My casting choice I've seen for this guy, uh, I've only ever seen in two roles. The first role I ever saw him in, he was playing Sir Guy of Gisborne in um, the BBC series of Robin Hood, which was amazing for two seasons, then quickly went downhill in my personal view. And if I'd only seen him in that, I'd say I wouldn't pick this guy, he's way too tall. But then I saw him as Thorin Oakenshield. And so Richard Armitage is my pick for Ferris Manus. Um, when he, at, at him and Soren Oakenshield showed he could play someone physically strong in a very muscly way, who so could wield a two-handed weapon like that. And yeah, I just fully believe he could give the character justice. And I think Ferris Manus has a good fan base, and I think that Richard Armitage would be able to respect that fan base very well. Angron. Angron to me would end up being a fully CGI character. There's no sense with him that there'd be a live action character kind of lurking around. I probably I'd want him to be CG. Which means the look of him isn't as so the look of the casting choice isn't so important. It's the voice. And I thought I'd want someone who can it'd give be very passionate in their performance. And also, very importantly, someone with a good scream. I wanted someone who could scream like a metal singer. Um, someone who could do that in a very sustained way. And by the time I thought about Angron, I'd already realised I was casting a comedy film here. So I've gone with Jack Black. And I genuinely believe that if... If someone at uh, Games Workshop at uh, the Warhammer Company was thinking about doing a big budget, star studded 40k universe thing, if they only take one of my casting choices into account, make it my last one, but if they want to make one of my non controversial picks, uh, or less controversial picks, uh, real. Jack Black as Angron, I think, would really give an amazing sense of 
gravity to him. I think he, the screams that Jack Black can do would really make the character very likable in as much as Angron can be likable. And I also like to think that if you cast Jack Black as Angron, the World Eaters fan base will triple overnight. And it would give... So, yeah, I think we'd end up with a borderline range refresh for the World Eaters because there'd be just so many new fans of the World Eaters because Jack Black is Angron. I would preface this also by saying I don't want Angron to sing in my dream version of a Warhammer series. I just want Jack Black's voice. The man has amazing pipes, but I don't want Angron to have amazing pipes. Reboot Gilliman. Um, Gilliman, I initially thought about this from a characterization point of view. He's, you know, he, he's basically leading the Imperium. He's got the Roman, he's got this Roman Emperor aesthetic going on. He's very organized. He's a bureaucrat, but he's not above cracking a joke. Um, but he's got a lot of responsibility on his shoulders. My first thought for Robert Gilliman was Daniel Day-Lewis, um, but I thought that it, I, I, something stopped me making that my choice for Robert Gilliman. So I've gone with a far younger actor than I necessarily would have wanted per se, but Josh Hutcherson is my pick for Rebuta Gilliman. He played Peter in The Hunger Games, so he can do very pained and very stoic. He can do a character who's got a lot, a lot of weight on their shoulders. He seemed to be okay in the trailers for the Five Nights at Freddy's movie. I've not watched the Five Nights at Freddy's movie, so maybe he delivers an Oscar-winning performance. I don't know. But I also think he's got the, sh the face for Gilliman. Um... Yeah, I think he's got the face for it, and I think that he can. I think he could do it justice. Okay, Mortarian. Um, Mortarian was a tough one. I wanted someone who, because Mortarian as a character is someone who fell to chaos, but not out of love of chaos. He's had a really hard life. The home planet of Barbus is an awful place to try and grow up. I thought. He looks really emaciated, really gaunt looking face on this model. I wanted to reflect that in the casting choice. And I can't think of anyone who can do that type of expression better than Cillian Murphy. As, Opp his, yeah, as Oppenheimer, phenomenal. Peaky Thomas Shelby in Peaky Blinders. As Scarecrow in the Nolan Batman trilogy. I just really feel like this guy would be able to portray Mortarian really well. Um, I think you'd require a lot of kind of CG budget to kind of give him the bulk that might be required of Mortarian in a power armor and whatnot. Still, it still ended up being a mostly CG character just because of the scale of Mortarian and the wings and all of that. But yeah, my vote for casting Mortarian is Cillian Murphy. Magnus the Red. Uh, Magnus the Red needed to be someone who, again, a mostly CGI character, but I wanted someone who could convey this kind of young arrogance. I mean, all the Primarchs are old, but there's a certain youthful arrogance to Magnus the Red, uh, which led him to believe that you know, he could stop Horus, which led to the, you know, the fact that the, you know, led to the demons breaking through during the heresy uh magnus yeah you know, it the birth of the magnus did nothing wrong meme it's playing with psychic energy and powers of the warp rightly or wrongly whether he could or couldn't control it there's a certain arrogance to that and i wanted someone who could play that arrogance well but also because i thought it'd be a largely cg character i thought it'd be wise to pick someone who had a lot of experience with motion capture so I've watched one movie where this guy played a role. I've watched a and listened to a very extensive interview with this man. And I'm aware of a third and I'm aware of another movie he's done. So I'm gonna show you his picture. I'll tell you his name. It's Jace, Jason Lyles. He was the gorilla in the movie Rampage, starring alongside Dwayne the Rock Johnson. He played the middle head of King Ghidorah in Godzilla King of the Monsters. 
Um, and yeah, I watched an interview with him. And I just feel like a guy who's got this talent for mo- motion capture, I feel like he could really capture Magnus the Red. So yeah, that's my choice, because yeah, a bit of a mocap guy, but I think he really captures the essence. Horus was a tricky one. There was a lot of weight and gravity for Horus. Uh, especially during the you know, during the heresy, it's named after him. He's meant to be he's powerful. He communes with the dark gods, but he's also a leader. People like him. The pri- Primarchs would follow him not because they loved chaos per se, it's because they loved Horus. He's the he's the Emperor's war master. He is brilliant. So you need a character who can convey that power. But also someone who can convey that malice. And someone who, depending on which sources you believe, can convey regret. There are people who suggest that Horus was filled with regret at the end of the heresy. So, yeah, for Horus, there was a lot of weight to that. But someone who can deliver that, can deliver a character who's evil but doesn't feel beyond redemption. I think that's important. And also, 40k is a setting with such deep lore. You'd want an actor who could give that depth and who could really develop the understanding. You want someone who could enter, a, who could play a role in a universe, wow people at audition using their knowledge of the universe, and even correct the creator of the universe on the lore of that universe. Even better if it's a science fiction universe. Meet Sam Witwer. Um, he was... He, he played a brief role in Supergirl, but that's not why he came to mind for me. He played Darth Maul in the Star Wars Rebels series. At interview... So, yeah, during the audition, he was told to meditate. And he said before that, basically, he clenched his fists until his knuckles got white. He was visibly agitated. And when he was asked why he was doing it, he said, because Sith Lords wouldn't have the mindfulness and that inner peace to meditate properly they could only copy the aesthetics of meditation not the substance of it well done in audition with that he's corrected george lucas on star wars law he delivers his lines as as darth maul in a very dignified statesmanlike way when darth maul is being calm but when he screams kenobi it's filled with such hatred and malice that it really works for a Horus-like character. So Sam Witwer here, he's my pick to play Horus Luprakal. Lorgar is going to be my most controversial pick for a Primarch casting. Lorgar is a character worshipping the emperor as a god the emperor said don't worship me as a god so they said fine i'll worship these four chaos gods they want my worship and fell to chaos through there i would have wanted an older actor but i was scouring my brain for an older actor who i felt could deliver that kind of religious fervor and I was really struggling. And then I thought, well, who could do that kind of fervour? And maybe with a kind of young arrogance to some, uh, for someone who could say, well, if you don't want my worship, I'll take it over here then. And in that thought process, I thought, well, you know who was really good at playing exactly that type of character? Timothy Chalamet in Dune. Um, I, you know, he's a lot younger than I necessarily want for a Primarch, but he can play, you know, when he was, you know, you know, in Dune, he was this very stoic character, uh, but young and arrogant and brash, which works well for a Primarch, especially one who fell. And with the visions he was having, I think it worked well. It would work well for a character like Lorgar. So, yeah, Lorgar Aurelian, I am suggesting, should be played by Mr. Timothy Chalamet. Maybe I'll revisit that thought when uh, that Willy Wonka film comes out. Maybe I'll look at him there and think, oh god, what was I thinking? And I'll suggest that Lorgar play, be played by like Jason Momoa or something. 
Vulcan. Um, Vulcan, I wanted to, a character who was big, beefy, strong, could conceivably be using both a hammer and flame weapons, but someone who I felt would also be able to convey a lot of kindness and being very lovable. Also, the salamanders have entirely scorched black skin, so someone who can act well in heavy makeup. I've seen this guy in two roles. Um, one, he was in very heavy makeup. One, playing a bit more of a serious character who was still basically likeable, but not as likeable. Dave Batista. I think that I've not seen him in his... <clears throat> yeah, up in, those, in anything other than Guardians of the Galaxy and Glass Onion, uh, other than trailers, but I think he can do serious very well. But he can do lighthearted and lovable very well. I really liked how he portrayed Drax the Destroyer in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I think a portrayal similar but obviously not the same as that would serve Vulcan very well. Especially in this kind of dark comedy style uh, movie or series that I'd be pitching here with this cast list. So yeah, so Dave Batista as. Vulcan himself. Corvus Corax. Um, Corvus Corax, I wanted someone who I felt could be sneaky, but also very kind of ostentatious. I wanted someone who I could genuinely believe could go into the warp, could be turned into a demon, some kind of demon crow, demon raven, but come out as still being a loyalist. Someone who had the face, had the hair, uh, and someone who I thought could do that kind of motion. This is Robert James Collier. Um, this is his portrayed as the character Thomas Barrow in Downton Abbey. And I just think that his portrayal of the character is very sympathetic, but also kind of scummy. His, I, I feel like he he, he's done a, he did a little bit of action in Downton Abbey and I thought that it would work very well so yeah Corvus Corax I think would be well played by um yeah by Robert James Collier um I think it would add a little bit of sophistication to him but also not undermine anything too fundamental about the character Alpharius and Omegon. Um, at one point, I see, I thought about like Tom Holland and Michael Sarah playing Alpharius and Omegon respectively, but I thought a wrong build, wrong style of acting for what I'd want. B really, I want Alpharius and Omegon played by the same person. With the Alpha Legion, you don't know who's who. You know. You're Alpharius, Alpharius is Alpharius, Omegon's Alpharius, your mother is Alpharius. So you want someone who can kind of be anywhere, being anything. You want someone who's got good acting chops, someone who can play conniving. You don't know if they're loyalist or traitor at any given moment. So someone who can, can who can believably play someone in that kind of moral grey area. So my choice for Alpharius and Omegon is Andy Serkis um, as Gollum, as Smeagol, and as Ulysses Claw. I think he has a really good portrayal of morally grey characters, morally dubious characters who are debatably villains. I think he's wiry in frame, and I think that works well for Alpharius. And so I think that, yeah, he'd just be really good as that character. I'd love to see him wielding a spear. I've got no idea what his voice delivery would be like, but I think that, yeah, I genuinely think that Andy Serkis could do some real justice to the Alpha Legion. Next, we're covering gods. Nurgle. I've got a lot of respect for Nurgle as a concept because it's not just being diseased. It's also stagnation and what i really thought would be good for nurgle would be someone who's a bit schlubby 
but who's got some genuinely heartfelt acting skill, but also someone who's done a lot of kind of stoner comedies. If I was making this list in like the mid 2000s, I might have suggested Jonah Hill to play Nurgle or maybe like a James Franco type. Uh, but really what I've gone with is Seth Rogen. Uh, he can do serious. He was did very serious in the interview. He's very serious in the Steve Jobs biopic when he played Wozniak. But I just think he could really do a character like Nurgle justice. I'd also love to see him playing off against Cillian Murphy as Mortarian. I feel like they're very different. The, the characters they tend to play are very different. And I'd love to see them playing off each other in that kind of in that way. So yeah, that's my choice for Nurgle. Cinch, Cinch, it's a character conniving schemes upon schemes upon schemes. Some schemes need other schemes to fail to succeed. An incredibly confusing character. So you want someone who can play a character who is very intelligent, but also play a character who is always up to something, is always seven steps ahead. So this is Benedict Cumberbatch. Um, his portrayal as Sherlock, as Alan Turing, as uh, Doctor Strange, I think these work very well for him. I think that if the character being portrayed was more like Sherlock, but with an American, you know, you know it was a bit more like Sherlock. Um, I think that would work very well for Cinch. And I think he can play some very frustrating characters, uh, personality-wise, which will work very well for Cinch. Yeah, I picked Bennett Cumberbatch. He's a very... yeah. He's in a lot of things. I sometimes think he gets cast in too many things. But I think he would do well as Cinch here. Corn was a tricky one. My first thought was Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, then it was... Um, like your Jason Statham's, your Bruce Willis types, your, your classic action movie stars. But then I thought, well, Korn sits on his skull throne, but he is the god of war. And that made me think about that film War Dogs, which then made me think about Jonah Hill. But not Jonah Hill as he was... In like hot, you know, you in the kind of Judd Apatow movie era, not Jonah Hill as he was in The Wolf of Wall Street or Moneyball. Jonah Hill, twenty twenty three. Jonah Hill, twenty twenty three. I think could and would kick your butt and my butt and anyone any and any butt that needed kicking. And I think that he definitely has the acting chops to play a character like Horn. And I think he's got the build to conceivably play a character who could be obsessed with combat. So yeah, Jonah Hill, my pick for Corn. Slanesh was tricky. I didn't like trying to think about who would play Slanesh. Um, I ended up with, and this is the casting choice I am least sure about, because basically I thought you need an actress to play Slanesh. And you want an actress who just has enormous range. So I picked my choice for Slanesh, not out of who I necessarily thought would be the best to play Slanesh specifically. I just picked the actress that I could think of who I view as having the most range. I am very sorry, Emma Thompson. Your great Professor Trelawney. Loved you as Nanny McPhee. Therefore, I've cast you as Slanesh in my fan movie. More characters that I think which should de do deserve a bit of a live action or at least adaptation fan cast. Trajan Valoris, uh, I'd already used Nick Hoffman, who I think could also do do well as Trajan Valoris. Quite an old character, a stoic character, very powerful. Um, you know, needs to have kind of been through his paces during the Heresy. Captain General of the Custodes. If the Imperial Guard are the best of the best of humanity, the Space Marines the best of the best of the best, and the Custodies are the best of the best of the best of the best, 
well, the Captain General has to be, counting five times here, the best of the best of the best of the best of the best. You know, resplendent gold, power axe armor. There's a lot to love about him, but he needs to be. He needs to. He's also a high lord of terror, so we need some kind of political acumen to him as well. So my choice for fan casting Trajan Valoris is Kurt Russell. Um, between his performances in more recent years, not as so much the younger Kurt Russell, uh, but Kurt Russell in Guardians of the Galaxy 2, Kurt Russell as he appears in Monarch Legacy of Monsters, I think has the chops for it. He's uh, uh, he's kind of he's got the the skill and he's a character he's a he's an actor I do I really feel that like could bring justice for Trajan Valoris himself. Next character on the block Commissar Yarrick. Character who, you know, basically they're an old man, but they're an established general. They defeated an orc an orc war boss and were able to take their power claw. The or he's got this reputation, he's powerful, but he's he's just an incredible combatant. And you need someone who can convey that and make that believable. Um and I think for me the choice for Commissar Yarrick is Peter Capaldi. I can imagine uh Peter Capaldi you know swearing at the orcs like it's you know like he's playing Malcolm Tucker again or like he's repre- or, or giving a powerful speech like he did in his do- tenure as the doctor and i think that Peter Capaldi does look like he's on the older side and i think that works really well for Commissar Yarrick and again if you know, if they could ever do an adaptation of just Old Bailey, bring in Peter Capaldi for it. Uh, it'd be a fun role for everyone, and I think he'd do well wielding this giant claw. Okay, next. Abaddon the Despoiler. It was tempting to just recycle my choice for Horus uh, to play Abaddon the Despoiler, but I would like Abaddon and Horus to have that ability to meet up without pulling the Alfarius thing of having the set, yeah, of filming the same person twice. So I want someone who is powerful, can convey the sense of being a significant threat, someone who I think could pull off wearing this absolutely insane armor, the claw, the sword, the big spike rack. Someone who I could believe could make that assault on Cadia. Someone who I can believe as the Chaos Big Bad, or the BBEG of the Warhammer 40,000 setting. I won't lie, this was tough. But Lee Pace, uh, he played Ronan the Accuser in the MCU, and he was Thorandil. He was Legolas's dad in the Hobbit movies. He's got the stature to be imposing. He's got the yeah. He's got the kind of the presence for it. He can play good. He can play villains very well in ways that feel powerful, but also feel like they are working on behalf of another. And I could really see this guy. As Avatar, I can see this guy commanding legions like he did in The Hobbit. And yeah, he's just an incredible, incredible actor with a lot of range. And I think he is best choice to play Avatar and the Despoiler here. Gazgul Mag Uruk Thraka. Uh, I spent a long time racking my brains for this one. Someone who could play a kind of uh, big boss kind of guy. Someone who's commanding, authoritative, can play someone who's physically very powerful but also orcs are fun they're funny they they talk like you the football hooligans they they they, they demand teeth um <clears throat> yeah they they will shout wah i'm not going to do any more orc impressions on this video and 
it was tricky. I was trying to think about football movies, variety movies. And eventually I just thought I should pick someone who can play, you know, again, with huge range. And just like when I think of an actress with a huge range, I think of Emma Thompson. When I think of a male actor who has huge range, it's Christian Bale. Uh, he could play. He's Doctor Michael Burry in the in the Big Short. He's obviously Batman. He was American Psycho. He was in the Deer Hunter. He was Gore the God Butcher. And in his normal voice, if you just listen to him in interviews, it's not that far off. A kind of you know a, a, an orc like character. He has a pretty normal British accent. I don't think. He'd need to adjust his voice all that much to give a convincing Gazgul Thraka performance. Um, yeah, so yeah, that's Gazgul, and let's carry on. Okay, Marnius Kalgar uh, is a character who I wanted to be just insanely strong. Someone big and burly. Someone who I could believe would be able to jump on top of one of those demon engines of corn the um the skull the bringer keeper of skulls or something lord of skulls i want to someone who i could believe could jump on top of a lord of skulls and rip it in two and also someone who i thought could blend well with my casting choice for catastacarius and um, yeah, someone who I, I could genuinely imagine the adaptation of the scene from Texas Speech, where Marnius Calgar tells Catosicarius that um, he thinks it's weird how much plot armor they have, and punches Catosicarius, telling him it's a new move. Who could do that in a way I could genuinely believe happening on screen? Arnie, Arnold Schwarzenegger. And again, Arnold as he is now, he's you know, he's he, he looks like he's been through the the times. He looks like he's been through the kinds of wars that Marnius Calgar has clearly seen. So yeah, I think that it's just a really good fit to have Arnold to have Arnie playing Marnius Calgar, chapter master of the Ultramarines. I just think it'd be uh, fun to kind of have. Calgar as the chapter master ending up playing second fiddle to the Primarch and I think that dichotomy uh, uh, between the two would be interesting to play out especially given who I've said should play uh, Gilliman himself I think it'd be a really interesting dynamic the two could have on screen. Catasicarius I'll be honest all I know about him is the TTS version I wanted someone who is undeniably competent, but someone who is going to be a bit younger, someone who I could see in that kind of position. And so I went with Tom Holland. I think that he's got the chops for it. He's, he's, a, he's a good actor. Uh, I He might be cast in a lot right now, but he's undeniably talented. And I think he would do well as Catasicarius. Okay, Isha. Um, Isha, I thought would you know she, she she's a good character, the you know, Eldar god, yeah, you know, El, El, you know, Eldari goddess, captured by Slanesh, tortured by Slanesh, saved by Nurgle, lives in the Garden of Nurgle. So I wanted someone who had a kind of elf like a build, but someone who could conceivably hold their own. So. I picked Anya Taylor Joy. Um, I'm thinking of her more uh, you know, from the Queen's Gambit than Last Night in Soho in the Mario Brothers movie. But I just feel like, in terms of appearance, she's got it, and she was phenomenal acting in the Queen's Gambit. So yeah, she deserves a role in a movie like in a film or TV series like this. Wouldn't be a huge role, but make Anya Taylor Joy play Isha. Because I think she'd be perfect. 
Cain. Cain is the Eldari god of war. He's a character who should be menacing, he should be terrifying, he should be a leader-like character, but also 100% computer-generated. He is, however, frequently kind of a joke. He's taken out by whichever protagonist needs to be shown as being powerful. He, so you want someone who can play someone with a commanding voice, who can conceivably lead, but in a funny way. Tom McGrath, a uh, director more than actor, but he does play the, the Penguin Skipper in the Madagascar films, the Penguins of Madagascar movie, and the Penguins of Madagascar TV show. I think that this would be the right type of authoritative to make Kane in any kind of adaptation, especially one which is going to end up being a lot more light-hearted. So... Yeah, I, I don't think many Elari fans are going to like that choice, but to make him, you know, give him the authority of Skipper, but also the comedy of Skipper. Chigorak, uh, the laughing god of the Harlequins. For this one, I want someone established, someone who's been around for a long time, someone very funny, but with an incredibly expressive face. Someone who can do really funny roles, but also really serious roles, because you want the seriousness to be able to convey that power, and you want the silliness because he's the laughing god. Again, could have picked mo you know, quite a few comedians, um, or very, you know, comedic actors. Once upon a time, Robin Williams would have been perfect for this role, but... I am instead choosing Jim Carrey. I think his early work shows how elastic his expressions can be. Uh, he's always done very good comedy films, uh, but in his more serious films, Truman Show, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, Number 23. I like the Number 23. I don't think it was a great movie, but it was very enjoyable for me personally. He can do serious roles. So I think him playing the Laughing God just makes a lot of sense. And again, he's an older actor now. He's established and as playing godlike characters needs an older actor in my view. So yeah, Jim Carrey as Chigorak. Penultimate, uh, penultimate choice here, the Emperor of Mankind. I have gone for the lowest of low-hanging fruit um, because... Uh, and I will grant if I were to try and write, I, I'd probably change my mind about this if the film or TV series were to be, say, focused on the Imperial Palace, or if it was going to be just during the Age of Strife, because the person I've picked would probably make for a really good Inquisitor Eisenhorn or a Trajan Valoris. But I've gone for Henry Cavill. Part of that is because Henry Cavill, at a time of recording, is probably the most famous person who is also very prominently into Warhammer. And I think that kind of power, um, that kind of, yeah, that star power, that fan appeal would just, you want him to be someone incredibly prominent. So make him the Emperor of Mankind. He deserves whatever role he wants. If this guy wants to, yeah, if Henry Cavill wants to play Lorgar, let him play Lorgar. If he wants to play the Emperor, he should play the Emperor. If he wants to play Belisarius Call, you let him be Belisarius Call. Because I think that if this would ever happen, I think that Henry Cavill would be what the one pushing it. Also, Henry Cavill has a lot of respect for the source material. Whatever he's in, The Witcher, in Superman, he's always he's always becoming an expert in his in that universe. And he already knows the Warhammer universe. He is, you know, he's a, he's a real Warhammer nerd. He's He belongs in this, and he belongs in a prominent role. So that's why I have suggested he should play the Emperor of Mankind. Final casting choice. The Necrons. 
Now, there are a lot of Necron characters, a lot of Necrons themselves. There's the whole legion of Necron warriors, there's the Immortals, the Lich Guard, the Triarch Praetorians, Flayed Ones, Lockhurst Destroyers, Ophidian Destroyers, Scorpec Destroyers, Lockhurst Lords, Scorpec Lords, Overlords, Trials in the Infinite, Oracle and the Diviner, the Silent King, the uh, you know, the Silent King's Triarchs, you got all the Satan Shards, Nightbringer, uh, Void Dragon, Deceiver, Transcendent Satan, you've got um, Nemesaur Zandrak as Vargard Oberon, you've got Anrakir the Traveller, Illuminator Seras. My thinking is they should all be voiced by the same person, they should all basically have a common voice. Um... And I thought, you know what, I'm going to be a little bit controversial with this fan casting here. Uh, I'm going to pick not the person I necessarily think would be the best for the role, not the person who I think would get the most fan recognition, not the person who I think would sound most like a Necron. Um, this person I've chosen is a genuine unknown in the acting sphere. And that's but but i am picking the person who i would most like to play every single necron character and necron entity in a warhammer series me i want to play every necron i love necrons i've necrons were the first video i made for this channel they i've got i've got thousands of points of necrons they're my favorite army they're my favorite books that the war the black library have put out I love Necrons, I love everything about them, I love the lore, I love the aesthetic, I love the characters, I love their stories. The Infant and the Divine is a very well respected book for incredibly good reasons. Seriously, read The Infant and the Divine. I want to play the Necrons. Um, so given this is my dream fan casting, I want to play Necrons. Uh, if you want a uh, named actor, I don't know, Willem Dafoe, why not? But no, this is my fan casting. I want to play all of the Necrons. So that comes to the end of the video. I'm going to say comment question of the day. I've got two. One is, if you want to have a go at my list, take the pri you know, the 18 named Primarchs, the four Chaos Gods, Isha, the Emperor of Mankind, Cain, and some Necrons. Who would you want to play who? You know, what, what's your choice? What's your, yeah, what, what's your view about who you'd want to play in your personal dream Warhammer series or movie? And if you could play someone in that, <clears throat> who would it be? Do you want to be Lehman Russ? Say you want to be Lehman Russ. Would you really, really want to play the Emperor of Mankind? Say that. If you want to play Trajan Valoris, Nemesaur, Zandrak, if you want to play Ran Space Marine Extras, if you want to play the Guardsman who's killed in the opening shot of the movie, if you want to be a Drukhari, more power to you. I, I don't understand, but if you want to be a Drukhari, be a Drukhari. Who do you want to play in the Warhammer, in your dream Warhammer series? And with that, I am going to say thank you very much for watching. Uh, thank you for watching all the way to the end. Uh, if you want to drop me a like on this video, that'd be brilliant. Um, uh, there's a lot more of this tomfoolery to come. If you want to subscribe as well, that'd be brilliant. I've got a uh, Patreon I've linked in the description. If you want to drop me some money, that'd be brilliant as well. Um, to keep these videos coming and... Uh, you know, most of the videos are, aren't going to be like this. Most of them are kind of rating out a specific thing I like or trying to summarise an aspect of the law in four sentences. Uh, but, you know, these just for fun videos will come about every now and then. So, yeah, if you wanted to you know, support me in either of those two ways, that'd be brilliant as well. Uh, I'm technically on Twitter or X, but I'm not as active there. So if you wanted to drop me a follow there, that'd be good as well. Um, and yeah, if you want to share this video around with some friends, that'd be great as well. Uh, because, you know, the more people get to watch these, the, the, the better. 
And yeah, I hope you're having a really good day. And with that, I will see you all next time. Have a good day. Wishing you well. Bye.